Hello, thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to outline our plans to create a repository of individual participant data from trials conducted in UK care homes. This work is part of a four-year project funded by HSNDR called DATCHA. It's led by the University of Hertfordshire where I am based and I'm working closely with colleagues at the University of Glasgow, in particular the Virtual Trials Archive. We started in January so it's still early days but I'll attempt to quickly run through our plans. So the overarching aim of DATCHA is to make better use of existing data in order to learn more about care homes and their residents. The COVID-19 pandemic has shone a light on the care home sector and the lack of reliable data we have on it. Administered data can tell us about demographic change in care home population over time, but we can't readily link this to health. Large cohort studies give us much more detailed health data, but the proportion of care home residents is very low. It's also difficult to find consistent information about care homes themselves. In the meantime, RCTs collect high quality, detailed information about every care home and every resident they recruit. While care home interventions cover a variety of health areas, the inclusion criteria is actually usually very similar. So there's lots of overlap in outcome measures used and the information collected on both residents and the care home structure. Trials in care homes monitor participants regularly, usually for up to a year. This means that outcome measures, health resource use, clinical events, as well as the care home characteristics can be tracked over this period, allowing for longitudinal analysis. Ignoring the intervention, we could therefore treat RCT data as a year in the life of a care home resident. So individually, these trials are valuable, but given that they collect very similar information about the same demographic group, if we combined the individual participant data from trials, we'd have a bigger data set with more statistical power to repurpose and answer additional research questions. So the pooled IPD can be used for exploratory analysis to better understand this population, to re refine future research questions, and to inform clinical trial design. It's a low risk, low-cost strategy that makes better use of existing trial data. So before I get into the methods, I realise that you aren't all trialists, so I thought it would be useful to outline the kind of data that care home trials tend to collect. When people think of RCTs, we are conditioned to think about interventions and treatment effects. In reality, there's a huge amount of additional information which is collected, and it's not always used to its full potential. So we can break this down into levels. First, we have the methodological factors relating to the trial itself. The care home trials are usually cluster randomized, so we collect a lot of information about each care home to ensure the treatment arms are balanced. And I'm hearing from other researchers that a lot of the data collected on RCTs is pretty difficult to find elsewhere. Then we have the data on each participant. We have the key demographics, medical conditions, health resource use, and major events through the course of trials, such as falls or infections. Um, I think it's worth noting that we, what we're doing is different to an IPD meta-analysis. We aren't interested in the intervention or the treatment effects. These have already been answered. This gives us flexibility to include lots of different clinical areas, which means a wide range of outcome measures. Some measures might be very specific to one trial, but lots are commonly reported, and we will pull what we can. So in terms of the inclusion criteria, we're keeping it pretty broad. We want any RCT conducted in UK care homes published in the last 10 years. In addition to the trial data set, we'll request important study documentation like the protocol, data dictionary, case reports forms, statistical analysis plans, basically anything that can help us in preparing the data for pooling. We'll also need evidence of participant consent or assent. Each participant has already consented in their original trial and the data is also fully anonymized before we receive it. So the ethics procedure has actually been quite straightforward. We have university ethics and the data protection impact assessment is already complete. Of course, none of this is possible if we don't get buy-in from trialists. So we did quite a lot of groundwork pre-funding. We approached PIs from some of the largest UK trials and we have provisional agreement from five trials. So we hope that we could start with 4,300 residents from 250 care homes. We also have an ongoing scoping review. We've identified at least seven large trials already taking place and more will be added throughout. I've also found a couple unpublished trials and it would be great if we could make previously on inaccessible data available for other researchers. We hope to add more as the 
project gains traction and I'd like to aim for IPD from about 10,000 residents in the next five years and this will keep growing. So we're just now starting to formally invite the trialists. Whoever wishes to join will form the trialist steering committee. The trialists will act as gatekeeper for their respective data sets. They're based all over the UK, so we will meet mostly virtually and plan to keep most of the communication via email. As external researchers request access to pooled data, the steering committee will see the proposals and what they're planning to do with the trial data. If they object, their trial data can be excluded, but if, they'd like, to, if they like the research and have, want an opportunity to get involved, they can if they're interested in it. Before any novel research is submitted, the steering committee will be able to review the paper and they're recognised in the publication. As new trials are added, we anticipate that new trialists will join the committee, so this will expand over the years. So anyone that's been involved in IPD meta-analysis will know that it's a lot of effort. From the beginning, we knew that this wasn't going to be a four years and then it's over kind of project or establishing a long-term resource. So to ensure that the resource can be used beyond DATCHA, we're very lucky to be working with the Virtual Trials Archive at the University of Glasgow, who've been doing similar work with trials related to stroke way back since 2002. Um, I recommend having a look at their website, which is virtualtrials.org. So once DATCHA has finished, the Care Home Repository will formally migrate into the VTA, so it'll have a permanent home when this funding ends. We've set up that the trial data will be sent to the VTA directly and will remain in the University of Glasgow secure server. External researchers send proposals via the VTA website to access the data. The VTA manages data requests and the trial steering committee will continue to oversee them. Pooled individual data will be made available for the other research teams in user-friendly data sets tailored to their explicit research question. So I think it's helpful to visualize as the development phase of DATCHA and the operational phase of the Virtual Trials Archive. We'll invite trialists to join and send the protocol and all the relevant information. If they want to take part, the trialists get in touch with their data manager, and generally this is the clinical trials unit, who will need to prepare the data by ensuring all resident and care home details are fully depersonalized so that only completely anonymized data can be held. The CTU data manager transfers the data to the virtual trials archive. I will have a secure login from the University of Hertfordshire to process this data and pool with other trials and complete the DATCHA analysis. Post DATCHA, end of 2023, if you look at the bottom right of the diagram here, the repository formally migrates to the VTA. External researchers will submit requests to the VTA. The VTA will circulate the proposal to the trialists for their approval. Data remains on the VTA server and is analyzed on their data platform. Prior to publication, the researchers sent the paper to the trialists for approval and all publications will include the on behalf of VTA byline. So once we get the trials pooled, the within DATCHA analysis is going to be quite basic, but hopefully will be useful for others as a first step for more advanced work. We'll start by reporting baseline characteristics about the care homes and residents as derived from all the pooled data. Then something that personally I don't think is done enough in trials generally is comparing the trial population with the cohort of interest. We have to be careful not to assume that care homes which participate in trials or research generally are fully representative of all UK care homes. We want to evaluate how representative the trial participants and the care homes may be. So I'm a health economist by background and I think I'll approach this like an evidence synthesis as if I was building an economic decision model. Um, another thing we're thinking about is our public involvement and making sure we prioritise the right questions for any future research using the trial repository. DATCHA has several regional and national consultation group events planned and I'd like to ask the stakeholders at these what the research priorities should be going forward, um, similar to kind of James Lind Alliance work. So bearing in mind what data we have available I see potential for work around identifying subgroups of residents, such as high versus low dependency or the small group with many recurring hospital admissions, or what happens with residents before and after a major event, like a fall. Um, I think there's potential for work, for methodological work around data harmonization or imputing missing data. 
similarly mapping or cross work for outcome measures, especially the quality of life outcomes. Uh, based on the care home level, there's lots of things you could do with the information about workforce and funding status and how it varies from home to home, and all this can be linked back to resident outcomes. I think it's worth noting that the VTA Stroke Repository has generated over 100 publications now, so there should be plenty of interest for lots of other researchers. So since I can't present in person, I thought I could end by showing who we are and where the team is based. This photo was taken in Glasgow in February, just a few weeks before social distancing. Uh, we have Jenny, who is the co-leading the work package. She's a geriatrician and will chair the trial steering committee along with Dr. Terry Quinn, whilst we are in the Dacha phase. And Maizoon Ali is the coordinator of the Virtual Trials Archive, and she's been that since 2008. So she will take over the running of the repository after the Dacha study ends. She's also teaching me the ropes until then. Um, we realise this is quite an ambitious project, and we've got lots to learn, but hopefully we can make it a useful resource. Thanks for listening. Uh, we welcome any comments or questions. The protocol should be published shortly and most information is on the study website. Thanks very much.